Hey designers! In this video, we're diving into creating this animation in Adobe After Effects, step by step. Let's get started. First, open a new composition. Next, import the background image. I'll be using several images in this tutorial, and I'll include the download link in the video description. Start by importing the background. Since it's a large image, let's scale it down to fit our composition and adjust its position as needed. Now, let's add the face image. Drag and drop it onto the timeline, then adjust its scale and align it vertically and horizontally. To ensure it moves with the background, let's parent the face layer to the background layer. This way, any movement of the background will also move the face along with it. Next, grab the star tool, or polygon tool, and draw a shape on the canvas. Align this shape vertically and horizontally, then adjust the shape layer settings. Increase the size and set the points to 6, or any number you prefer. Change the shape type to polystar to get the look we want, then scale down the shape to fit the design. Finally, let's scale down the face layer a bit to refine the look. Keep everything aligned and adjust sizes as necessary for balance. Now, adjust the size of the shape until you're satisfied. Once the size is set, let's create a path from this shape. To do this, go to the shape layer, and in the search bar, type path. Find polystar path 1, and you'll notice that it doesn't currently have a path. To create a path, right-click on Polystar Path 1 and select Convert to Bezier Path. Now, you'll see that a path has been generated. With the path selected, press Ctrl plus C on your keyboard to copy it. Next, create a camera layer by right-clicking in the timeline, selecting New Camera, and pressing OK. Once the camera is created, make all layers 3D to add depth to the composition. Now, let's add a null object to control the camera. Make this null object 3D as well, and parent the camera to this null layer. Using a null gives us more control and flexibility when animating the camera. With the null layer selected, press P to open its position. Click on the position option and press Ctrl plus V to paste the path we copied earlier. You'll now see that the path has been applied, but sometimes it might be slightly misaligned. To fix this, move the playhead to the keyframe where the shape is fully visible. Then, ensure all keyframes are selected, and use the arrow keys to adjust the position of the path so it aligns perfectly with the original shape layer. Once everything is aligned, your scene should look like it's following the intended path. To increase the duration of the animation, move the playhead to the 10 or 12 second mark. Then, select all keyframes. Holding Alt, drag the keyframes to the right to extend the animation, creating a smoother, slower transition. Next, if you want the animation to begin after a brief delay, move all keyframes to the 2 second mark on the timeline. You can always adjust the speed later by moving the keyframes closer together or further apart. Now, with the animation in place, play it back to review. You'll see that the null layer follows the path of the shape. Let's enhance this by creating a trim effect. Select Shape Layer 1 again. Go to Add. Trim Paths Open Trim Paths 1. Click the stopwatch next to end to enable keyframing. The goal here is to reveal the shape progressively as the camera follows the path. Since the shape has 6 points, we can use a bit of math to sync the trim effect with the camera movement. Set the end value to 0 initially. Move to the second keyframe of Null 1, here, 
you'll see the null has moved along one of the six segments. To calculate the end value, divide 100 by the number of segments, 6, giving 16.67. Set the end value to 16.67 at this keyframe. Now, you'll see that one segment of the shape is revealed as the camera moves along that part of the path. Now, move the playhead to the third keyframe. Here, set the end value to 33.33 so that the second line completes. Continue this process by advancing to each subsequent keyframe and setting the end values as follows. Next keyframe, 50. Following keyframe, 66.67. Next keyframe, 83.33. Final keyframe, 100. When you preview the animation, you'll see that the shape is being drawn progressively while the null follows along. Now, let's smooth out the motion by adding easy ease to the keyframes on null one. To do this, select all keyframes, right-click, and choose keyframe interpolation. Change the settings from auto bezier to lock to time to ensure the keyframes remain fixed at their points even after applying easy ease. Hold control and click on those specific keyframes to revert them to normal. Press F9 to apply easy ease to the selected keyframes for smoother transitions. Then, right-click on the keyframes, go to keyframe velocity and set both incoming and outgoing influence to 65. This adjustment gives a more natural easing effect, as you'll see in the graph editor. Now, do the same for the keyframes on shape layer 1. Set both incoming and outgoing velocity to 65. When you preview, the animation should look smoother with a more balanced easing. With that done, let's import the six icons. Begin by importing the first PNG file and ensure the playhead is on the first keyframe. Drag and drop this PNG onto the timeline, adjust its size, and make it 3D. With the playhead still on the first frame, press Ctrl plus Home to snap the icon to that keyframe. For the second PNG, place it on the timeline and adjust its scale to 34 to match the first icon. Make it 3D, move the playhead to the second keyframe, and press Ctrl plus Home to align it perfectly. Repeat this process for the remaining icons, 3rd to 6th PNGs. Place each one on the timeline, make them 3D, and set their scale to 34. Now, go through each icon to position it correctly. Start by selecting the third PNG and moving the playhead to the third keyframe. Press Ctrl plus Home to snap the third icon to this keyframe. Next, select the fourth PNG. Move the playhead to the fourth keyframe and press Ctrl plus Home to snap it into place. For the 5th PNG, move the playhead to the 5th keyframe and press Ctrl plus Home. For the 6th PNG, move the playhead to the 6th keyframe and press Ctrl plus Home. With all the icons positioned, preview the animation to see how everything aligns. Now, let's add the text. Move the playhead back to the first keyframe and use the text tool to type your text. Highlight the text to adjust the size, font, and alignment, then make this layer 3D. 
Make sure to set this text layer to 3D as well. Press Ctrl plus Home to snap the text to this keyframe. Manually adjust the position if needed to ensure it's perfectly placed. Once everything is set up, preview the animation again to confirm that the text and icons are aligned and move in sync. To adjust the camera's position for an engaging start, select the camera layer and press P to reveal its position properties. Click on the stopwatch next to position to set the first keyframe. Then, move the playhead a few frames backward to set up the start of the zoom effect. Adjust the Z position to bring the camera closer and modify the Y position to ensure that the text and the first icon are fully visible. Now, delete any unnecessary blank keyframe that and shift the first keyframe to the desired position. At this new starting point, zoom the camera in closer for a dramatic, close-up effect. Preview to check the pacing, it should start close-up, then smoothly zoom out. Adjust the keyframe timing to control the zoom speed for a dynamic transition. When satisfied, select both keyframes, press F9 to apply Easy Ease, then open the graph editor. Adjust the curve for a smoother acceleration. Now, to add some text animation, select the text layer, go to Effects and Presets, and find the Opacity Flicker in Effect. Double-click or drag this effect onto the text layer. Preview the animation to confirm that it has the desired flicker effect. Add a blank keyframe to the camera position at the end of your animation timeline. This helps create a smooth transition back to the starting point. Next, navigate back to the second keyframe of Null 1 to add your second text. Use the text tool to type your text and adjust paragraph spacing and alignment as needed. Make sure to set this text layer to 3D as well. Press Ctrl plus Home to snap the text to the second keyframe position. If the text is invisible, it may be positioned too far back, press P to access the position properties and adjust the Z position to zero to bring it into view. Manually adjust the position as needed. After positioning the text, apply the opacity flicker in effect to this layer, just as you did with the first text. Before moving to the third keyframe, you might notice that the animation feels a bit fast. To slow it down, select the Null Camera and Shape Layer 1, then press U to reveal their keyframes. Next, press the tilde symbol key on your keyboard to expand the view for easier keyframe visibility. Select all the keyframes for both layers and hold down the Alt key while dragging them to the right, shifting them to about the 18 to 20 second mark. This adjustment will slow down the overall animation speed. After making the adjustments, press the tilde key again to return to your original view. With these changes, your animation should now have a smoother and more controlled flow. Continue with the process for the third keyframe text, following the same steps as before. Now, select Null 1 and press U to display its keyframes. Move the bar indicator to the third keyframe. Here, you will add the text for the job icon which reads jobs are disappearing. Set the text layer to 3D, then press Ctrl plus Home to snap it to the third keyframe position. Press P to bring up the position properties and set the Z position to zero to ensure it comes to the front. 
Manually adjust the position as needed and apply the opacity flicker in effect to this text layer as well. Next, proceed to the fourth keyframe. Move the bar indicator to this point and use the text tool to create the fourth text layer. After formatting the text and ensuring it is set to 3D, press Ctrl plus Home to snap it to the fourth keyframe. Again, press P and set the Z position to zero to bring it to the front and manually adjust its position. Don't forget to apply the opacity flicker in effect to this layer. For the fifth keyframe, move the bar indicator to that position. Use the text tool to write your text, format it as before, and ensure the layer is set to 3D. Press Ctrl plus Home to snap it to the fifth keyframe, set the Z position to zero, and adjust the position as necessary. Apply the opacity flicker in effect to this text layer as well. Finally, for the sixth keyframe, move the bar indicator to the last point in the timeline. Use the text tool to create the last text layer, making sure to set it to 3D. Press Ctrl plus Home to snap it to the sixth keyframe, set the Z position to zero, and adjust the position manually to ensure it's perfectly aligned. Apply the opacity flicker in effect to this text layer as well. Let's move on to the final adjustments. The camera layer needs attention, so select it and press P to make the position keyframes visible. Since you added a blank keyframe at the end, move the bar indicator a few frames forward from that keyframe. Adjust the Z position to ensure that everything on the canvas fits nicely on screen. After adjusting the Z position, don't forget to also tweak the Y position to center everything perfectly within the frame. Next, focus on the background layer. Since it was initially scaled down, Check the scaling again and make any necessary adjustments to ensure it looks good alongside the other elements. Now, let's review the entire animation to confirm that everything is flowing well. Once satisfied with the overall look, the final step is to apply a glow effect to the shape layers. Start by selecting Shape Layer 1. Go to Effects and Presets and search for Glow. Apply the glow effect to this layer. Adjust the glow radius and glow intensity to ensure it matches the layer properly. Copy the glow settings by selecting the glow effect and pressing Ctrl plus C. Start by selecting the text layer and pressing Ctrl plus V to paste the glow effect you copied earlier. Adjust the glow radius and glow intensity to ensure it matches the text layer properly. After fine tuning the glow effect, select it once more and press Ctrl plus C to copy it. Now, go through each text layer one by one pressing Ctrl plus V to paste the glow effect onto all of them. Next, it's time to add the glow effect to the PNG icons. Select the first PNG and apply the glow effect to it. 
Change the glow's color channel to alpha channel for better blending, and then adjust the glow radius and glow intensity to your liking. Once you're satisfied with how the glow looks on this PNG, select the glow effect and press Ctrl plus C to copy it. Now, select all the other PNGs and press Ctrl plus V to paste the glow effect onto each one. This will ensure that the same glow settings are applied uniformly across all PNGs. Once you've pasted the glow effect on all elements, your animation is complete. Let's do a final preview from the very beginning to see how everything comes together. This is how it looks now. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like it and comment on it. If you have any questions or confusion, feel free to ask me in the comments section. I make sure to reply to each and every comment. And don't forget to subscribe to Ace Designs.